It's the first week of spring and I've yet to prune my roses. And as we discussed a couple of months ago, the best time for pruning your plants in general is after that last chance of frost has passed your grow zone. For us here in Los Angeles, our last chance of frost was the last week of January. Yet here we are about six weeks later and we still have not done it. We're going to discuss the importance of getting the job done now. Um, and I'm hoping this inspires the rest of you guys to prune your plants to get them off to an excellent grow season ahead. By pruning your plants early in the season, you can enjoy the most bountiful blooms and overall the healthiest plants. In today's lesson, we're also going to be discussing the difference and the importance of compost versus mulch versus fertilizers. In addition, we're going to be talking about rose prune sealants and the benefits it'll offer your plants against both pests and disease. We're then going to conclude with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard demonstration as a protection for your plants against both beetles and weevils and pests and disease, as well as curbing weather extremes, a product that's superior to latex and tar-based products, as I'll be explaining shortly, in addition to protecting your plants from weather extremes, as here we are in spring, and we're just a few short months away from the longest and hottest days of summer. Well, let's get started. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And we're going to start off in today's lesson about pruning. And you got to start off with what is the general goal of pruning? Is the goal to have a compact, bushy rose structure with minimal growth and maximum blooms? Or do we want a long stem rose type growth out of our roses? And Again, with pruning, you actually are the author. You are the artist that's going to decide the fate of your rose plants. And on our property, we typically prune to create the longer stems and fewer roses as that results in, in general, maximum optimal health. And let me demonstrate, firstly, what the bush pruning structure should look like. Come in a little closer. So if you come into the structure of the rows, you'll notice here that there is a lot of branching going on. You can see there's um, not generally like a tree trunk, but just multiple branches, a lot of crisscrossing happening. And it's been about a year since we last pruned this structure. The goal is to create a light and airy and open structure with good air penetration in addition to light exposure. And so the first thing I'm looking at is um, we're going to want to remove any crisscrossing or branching that's happening. So as you can see, there's a lot of new growth here on the rows. It's pushing out all of this vegetative growth, about a few inches of growth since this is all last year's growth behind it. And even some of the tips are beginning to express some buds for future blooms. As you can see, there's some color, pretty soft and weak um, bloom so far. And again, because the structure truly needs to be pruned, and that will actually strengthen the entire overall expression of the plant, whether it be the growth and the blooms and ultimately the flowers. What we're going to do again, the first thing is to remove any crisscrossing. And so I'm just basically coming in and I see that this branch from this side is coming into that side. And I'm simply going to prune to the nearest bud. And I'm looking for buds that are pointed away from the center of the plant. I'm basically pruning about a quarter of an inch away from that last grow tip and we're now looking for again growth that is crossing here's another example if you come in over here this branch is coming in towards the middle and we can simply prune it back to this spot over here we're going to also remove this flower so that it can work more on more vegetative growth out of this area and that's going to create more of a compact structure so let me just come around it real quick and to show you how fast now I can create a compact rose that's going to be more of a bushy structure that's going to, again, be compact, minimal growth, maximum bloom type structure. And even some of the new growth here, I'm going to be pulling it in. Again, just to tighten the overall structure, just to give it a nice, fresh, even haircut. Check this out over here on this side. So you can see over here, there's a couple of branches. I can reduce it down to one. This over here has got a lot of different branches going in different directions. 
Let me clean that up. Actually, I can shorten it a lot more right there. And I can pull this one in all the way down to there. Check out this perfect example of crisscross between this branch and that branch. And again, you're the artist. You're the author. You get to decide, is this the branch that's going to support the flowers for the year or this one? I'm going to say let's take out the older branch. So I'm going to be pruning it down to right here. There that goes. Again, these two are a little bit too close to one another. I'm going to prune that back like so. And then we've got this branch over here. And that's been done. And now let's just continue with shaping the plant. Any growth that's growing in a direction you don't like, such as in this situation, it's, it's basically encroaching on the wall here. I can actually prune that back like so. If I want it in even more, you can keep pruning it. And there we go. Tighten that into the wall area. And we'll continue that all the way up like so. And just check out how natural this looks over here. When you're pruning, you can see all this growth over here and you want it to like have like nice tips. Ideally, if there's some growth tips and it's not every single time. For example, over here, there isn't much growth happening. So this actually looks like a harsh prune. Compared to over here, I consider them soft prunes as it's got growth happening at the tips. Here's another branch. I'm going to quickly demonstrate a soft prune. Simply going to go to where there's a bud that's growing, prune about a quarter inch above it. And now it's a soft prune. It's as if I've never pruned it. But in fact, look how much we've just removed. Strengthening the overall structure and the health of the plant. If you see any rose hips, these are the fruiting bodies of the rose. You're going to want to remove these as this does consume a ton of energy from your plants. And you want the resources to going towards growth and blooms, not necessarily rose fruit. And there you have it. This here is designed to be a compact, bushy rose structure. Just check it out. Take a look at it from the bottom up. Some crisscrossing, as you can see over here, again, can still be cleaned up quite easily. We got to decide are we going to keep the young growth or the old growth? I'm actually going to side with removing some of the old and giving the younger branches the next shot. Flowerful for this upcoming year. And this here is from the neighboring rose bush. But this one here in general is done. As you can see, it's nice, tight, compact, and we've allowed most of the growth to stay. We pruned back, I'd say on average, about 20 to 30%. But when it comes to creating your long stem roses, and again, your best chance of pruning is after that last chance of frost date has passed. Ideally, I would have done this several weeks ago, especially in my grow zone. As the rest of America and especially the northern states are warming up, hopefully the timing is going to align perfect for you. For those of you watching this lesson in the colder states, such as the northern United States, hopefully your last chance of frost state has not yet passed and or it's close in time so that you can capitalize on doing your maximum pruning for the year. And that is your pruning on wood that is over two years of age. Your best time for doing that is after the last chance of frost date has passed. And I'll explain to you why in just a minute. But if you take a look here, what I'm going to do now is quickly convert this now bush type pruned rose into a long stem type rose where I'm going to prune it down to basically the base where I'm going to have maximum vegetative growth and minimal blooms on longer stems. And we're going to accomplish that by pruning it down to the second and even third year wood. Check this out. The general goal again, maximizing air circulation and light penetration. So here we go.
Now, how does that look to you? Just check this out again. We've now pruned it for maximum vegetative growth, long stem roses. Just check that out. And hopefully, even though this looks drastically different, you see and appreciate the value that this is gonna bring. It's still a beautiful structure. You can see there's some green. It's not necessary. You can see all of the buds that are like basically gonna be bursting with energy as all of the resources of the roots are now going to push on this structure and it's going to give it a ton of stability and strength that is going to result in basically month after month, season after season for some of the best, most bountiful, most beautiful roses as we've been doing here on our property for many successive years. And I hope you enjoy the same success on your property as well. Well, let me now demonstrate the reason that you don't want to be pruning your roses too soon. Let me show you an example in the back. Follow me. So if you prune your roses or any of your plants in general too soon, for example, a lot of people like to prune their plants in the fall, some in the winter, but if you don't wait for your last chance of frost date to pass, as again, for us here specifically in Los Angeles, that is the last week of January is the ideal time to start pruning or that first week of February with, again, that pruning that you're gonna do on wood that's more than a year old. So your second, third, and even older wood. For pruning that you're gonna do on growth that's less than a year, you can do that virtually throughout the year as we do here for our roses, as well as our citrus, apples, and other fruits that we've got grown on our property. If you take a look here, you'll see that there's a ton of dead wood. And again, that is basically damage from lack of light and cold weather that these branches have sustained. What we're gonna do now is prune, again, after that last chance of frost date, and clean this all up, and we're not gonna be dealing with dead wood for the remainder of this year. All of this dead wood increases exponentially the exposure to beetles and weevils and other pests such as termites in addition to disease. Again, they're gonna enter the dead wood and then work their way into the living wood. What we're gonna do is basically clean this all up like so. And again, I'm gonna be pruning it the long stem rose method and basically doing the heaviest, a prune, with the goal of creating that base shape, open structure, and, and bear in mind, this is what we do at our roses every single year for the last several years that these roses have been here on our property. I know for a lot of you this looks intimidating, it looks like it's harming or injuring the rose, but in fact, this is part of preserving and maintaining the health and the longevity of your roses on your property. Again, check out all of this crisscrossing that's happening. There's a branch here. It's all coming out of the same location. There's this branch and that branch competing for resources, kind of like a river. We want all the nutrients to flow and basically go down different paths, not competing for nutrients along the same path, in addition to opening that light and air exposure for the rose. And check that out. This is now ready for another year of growing success. And let's just continue.
So we've just pruned 16 roses in about 25 minutes. That's less than two minutes per plant. Not that it was a race. I know a lot of friends that spend up to an hour per rose. Again, and I did this as well as making sure that the buds were on the outward facing. So again, the growth happens in the outward position rather than buds that would otherwise grow towards the center. So again, I did put an eye into it and I did prune all of my cuts within a quarter inch of the nearest bud so that there isn't any dead wood between the pruned and the next growth. And that's the final result. So what we're going to do now to maximize the health of these roses for the upcoming year is that we're going to mulch and we're going to add some compost and we're going to fertilize. So your mulch is simply ground up tree bark. And ideally it should be sourced from multiple trees, but in this particular landscape we're going with a black mulch. As you can see, this is simply just wood chips and again they've been colored in the color black. You can also get it colored red and or brown. But the way to go is simply to go natural and ideally is to have a diversity of wood chips. And this here is compost. Compost is simply broken down. It could be wood chips. It could also be um, sourced from leaves and foods and so forth. And the goal is to introduce some more organic material because imagine that with all of these branches and you can quickly take a look at what we've done here on the side in nature these branches would break and return those elements back into the soil. So all of the pruned branches that would in nature return back to the soil, we're now basically enriching with this nice, um, rich compost that'll be going into that top layer. And this will continuously also, the wood chips will continuously feed the plants also as it breaks down, eventually turning into compost. Wood chips on average will last in your garden for about two years, um, just to keep that in mind. And then lastly, we're going to be fertilizing with the Ivy Organic All-Purpose Fertilizer. This is the Premium Blend and the Super Blend. And unlike most fertilizers, what the Ivy Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers will do for your plants is offer them all six plant macronutrients. I teach at garden centers throughout the country. And I know with a lot of the so-called experts there, they're all focused on just the NPK, which are your primary macronutrients but there are a total of six macronutrients, which are elements that plants need in abundance. Let's start off with our primary nutrients, which are your NPK, standing for your nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But plants' dry weight is on average about 30% calcium, which you'll find in the cell walls of all the plants. And the Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers have calcium in addition to the other macronutrients, which include magnesium, which you'll find in the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, in addition to sulfur, very important for the enzymatic processes and overall greening of the plant. So you got all six plant macronutrients in addition to the super blend has plus azomite. And azomite is simply crushed volcanic rock, giving your plants a lot of the micronutrient nutrition as well. And we're going to be using these products and I'm going to be demonstrating the steps to basically bring all that health to all of your plants in your garden. Let's get started. So these are all the wood chips that were laid about a year ago. And if you take a look, what we're going to first do is pull some of these wood chips back to expose the underlying topsoil. The goal is to not get any of these wood chips into the topsoil as the wood will, and a lot of research supports, rob the soil of the nitrogen. So we want to keep the wood chips near the top and not into the soil. What we're going to do next, and again, check that out. You can already see the life that's here in the garden soil, evidenced by this worm. But it's more than just worms. The other part of the important life that you'll find here in the soil include the beneficial bacteria and the mycorrhiza, which is the um, network of fungus that basically connects all the roots, transporting water and minerals between the plants as well. So you want to make sure you're doing things all organically. So we're pulling all the wood chips back. And the next thing we're going to want to do is introduce the compost. So we're simply going to put a couple of handfuls of compost around the root zone of the plant, like so. And then we're going to go with the Ivy Organics all-purpose fertilizers. And we're just going to put a couple of teaspoons around the plant. Whatever the recommended dose is, since it's still spring, you can put about half the recommended dose. As the plant is still waking up, as much growth as you see and as exciting as the plant looks, this is still the halfway point for the plant. 
the most important time for feeding your plants, and I test this all the time and a lot of people miss it, the most important time to feed your plants organically is May. In May, you introduce your organic fertilizers, and then that way by June, all the organic fertilizers are breaking down with that soil biology, making all those elements, those six macronutrients and micronutrients available to your plant, so that by June, the first day of summer, when the light hours are at a maximum for the year, when the temperatures are the warmest and the plant's metabolism is peaking, that's when you want to make sure that the plant macronutrients are available to your plants. I would say over 90% of growers always guess it's either you know, February, March, or April is the most important month, but it's always May. May is the time to introduce your organic fertilizers to give those plants a chance to break down those elements and get those nutrients available to your plants come June. So again, we're only just putting a small amount of fertilizer around those, these plants, and as soon as we water it, it's going to begin to work. So you would expect the last thing for me to do is to introduce the fresh layer of wood chips, which is our mulch layer to the plants. We're not going to do that yet because I want to now demonstrate the importance of adding your prune sealer for your roses. And let's get into that first, and you'll see why we're jumping into that step before we conclude with our layer of mulch. Let's do it. So the next thing we're going to do is prepare what's going to be the rose prune sealer using the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 plant guard. And the reason you'd use a rose prune sealer is to protect those prune surfaces against um, pests such as beetles, weevils, in addition to termites, and protect those surfaces from disease. However, most of the products that exist out there are either latex-based or tar-based, and those are going to trap moisture on those prune surfaces and contribute to underlying rot. Ivory organic, on the other hand, dries on porous, resulting in a much healthier seal, in addition to protecting those surfaces against pests and disease, and also protecting your plants from weather extremes. Here we are now mid-spring, and we're just a few months away from the hottest days of summer, and we've pruned the heck out of these trees, exposing the inner basically once protected and shaded interior trunk and lower branches, and now they're getting a lot of sun, and we've demonstrated over the years examples of first, second, and third degree sunburn damage. What we're gonna do now is together mix a can of the Ivory Organic 3-1 Plant Guard so you can see the multiple and various uses. If you turn it around, you'll notice on the back that the product can be used as a brush on directions as a foliar spray and or a tree paste depending on how much water is added. In this example I'm going to demonstrate two of the valuable uses. The Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard Color White is also OMRI listed for commercial agriculture in addition to backyard growers that just want to grow the healthiest plants. And let's get started with preparing the product. So once you open your can, it's gonna come with the base powder and the oil vial. And the oils include the following, castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. All of these oils are naturally insect and rodent repellent protection. Again, protection from the insects and rodents. And the inert ingredients include limestone, mica, milk are the caseins or the proteins that help create a strong bond that'll last about a year. Methyl cellulose, diatomaceous earth is another insect repellent protection um, for your plants. And what we're going to do here is simply add the base powders to the can. And then we're going to add the oils and the water. And as you like going up about halfway first, turning it into the paste and then adding more water to get the brush on solution, which is once you have a full can of water, you've got the right consistency for brushing it on. The product also comes in colors brown, green, gray, and grayish. Since I've got the color green here, let me just show you the difference on the plant. Let me just demonstrate the differences here. So if we go with the white, we're gonna simply prune all of these, again, exposed areas that, again, beetles, termites, and disease can penetrate and get into the heart of the wood. And we're now simply sealing it like so. 
but we're not just sealing the pruned surfaces with the ivory organics. We're actually going to go and coat the entire stems. We're now protecting the entire structure from weather extremes. Specifically, we're now protecting it from summer sunburn. Had we done this in the fall, we're protecting it from winter sun scald, which is when daytime temperatures get warm, but the soil is still like freezing and the plant will lose a lot of moisture due to the warmer days and the colder nights. And that'll result in cracking of the bark that whitewashing can otherwise protect the plant from. So here's color white. And now let me show you the color green. And you can see how natural this otherwise looks. The stems of the roses are green, mostly. As it gets older, they start turning to gray. And again, another color that we have that's pretty similar to this color down here is called grayish. So you can also do color grayish. And the goal is with the colors, obviously, that regardless of the color, it's offering the plant protection from direct sun exposure. So the plant's not having to deal with having to heal from first, second, and third degree sunburn damage and instead can focus on growing, flowering, and if this were a fruiting plant, also helping maximize your fruit yields as well. This is an excellent practice on all of your new plantings to get them through that first and second year of life and also following any summer pruning you're doing that again opens that canopy and brings in too much light to the understory tree trunk and lower branches. So a lot of our customers ask, what's the difference between the can and the ready-to-use spray? The ready-to-use spray is ideal for if you're going to be planting anything new and you're trying to protect those leaves or even your tomatoes, pepper, squash, anything you're introducing into your garden, you're actually gonna be putting a light coat of protection so with our new rose bush that we're going to be introducing into our garden, we're going to whitewash it. We can do it before or after planting. And what we're simply doing is lightening the entire structure. And if you take a look at it now, you'll see that the leaves have basically a protection similar to a dilute milk. And it's now basically helping to curb the weather extremes in addition to, again, the oils in addition to diatomaceous earth are going to help keep this pest free. Imagine again also your smallest plantings, your newest tomatoes you're introducing in your garden, your young tender pepper plants. By whitewashing those structures, they're going to become more pest resilient and more likely to get past that first and second week of growth without getting chewed on and ultimately add towards your growing successes for the year. So again, whitewashing the structure, curbs weather extremes, keep pests off, all organic, dries on porous, and you can also do your nutritional foliar feed through this product, unlike if you were using a latex or tar-based product. Using your pint-sized can, if you were gonna make your own spray bottle, and it reads here on the back, you can simply use a third to a half of a teaspoon to a 23 ounce bottle, and you can make your own spray bottle. One of these pint-sized cans makes somewhere between 22 to 25 spray bottles, or up to five gallons of foliar spray. What I'm gonna do here today is I'm simply gonna take this liquid that we made together, and I'm just going to eyeball this. I'm going to make something pretty strong, something that's going to hopefully accomplish the lightening of the plant and that I can put in my tank sprayer. This here is a gallon um, tank sprayer. I only filled it up about half a gallon of water. I'm simply going to add this solution to the water. But before I do, I'm simply using a paint strainer like this. And let's together add some of the solution to the water, like so. And we're going to be able to do all of our roses very quickly using this method. So again, I put in quite a bit of solution. This is going to end up, again, the goal is turning my roses white. And there it goes. Just going to let that rest for another minute and then we'll work with the solution. And so we've just passed it through the paint strainer, again, to remove any chance of blocking that would potentially block the spray head. And let's add some pressure to this and see what we've got here. And 
And here we go. And here we're lightening the structure, including the leaves and all. And again, you can see this is far more concentrated as these leaves are a lot wider. The stems are getting some protection. And this process is going to be a lot faster than going with the brush on. And we've created our own much thicker application. Still maybe not as thick as obviously doing the brush. But imagine if we did nothing. These roses are definitely going to suffer in the upcoming month as the temperatures begin to rise, both here in Los Angeles as well as across the country. Follow me. Look how fast we're going to do all these roses. So now you guys see the difference between the brush on, the ready to use spray, and then just creating your own foliar spray. You can now control the concentrations and you can see the, the different values you can get using the product. Let's check that out. Even with the spray, since we made our own, it's a lot thicker. All of these tips are going to be protected. Let's start here with the nice fresh cut. And let's just spray that down. See how that's all getting some coverage? Again, this is going to help protect all those surfaces that are otherwise exposed and open to the environment. And keep going. And again, this is something you would never do if this was latex paint. All 16 roses have been protected in virtually a few minutes, and there's still quite a bit of solution left to go. So this is stuff we'll put in storage. We're gonna rinse this entire system out with water to make sure that it doesn't dry into the spray head or other parts within the system. So we can reuse it for the next foliar application, um, whether again, we're either whitewashing or foliar feeding using the Ivory Organics fertilizers that can also be transformed into a foliar feed as well, which we're gonna be discussing in upcoming lessons, or I'll put a few video links of foliar feeding that we've demonstrated in years past. And now here we are with the final step that we talked about, the value of mulching. And we're simply gonna add a layer of our wood chips all around the plant. And this is gonna give the plant a nice, fresh look for the remainder of this year. I know this already looks great, but it's gonna continue looking better and better day after day, week after week, month after month for this entire growing season. Just don't forget to feed your plants one more time in May most important month of the year for organically feeding your plants and lastly you're going to feed your plants one more time with half the recommended dose by early fall to make sure again your plants have all the macronutrients and micronutrients before they go into winter dormancy and so this here is the one week update and since we've pruned the plant it is now growing you can see that the leaves that we've sprayed still have product on it, despite the fact that it's rained heavily twice in the last week. New growth, if it needs to be protected, you can spray with the 3-in-1 plant guard ready to use spray. The coated surfaces on the tree trunk will remain um, on there for up to a year. And if we come through, you can see that for this plant that we've just simply sprayed, you can still see the evidence of the spray along the trunk and the lightning that it's offered the plant throughout by simply doing it as a spray, even though it's significantly less. And now just check out all of the other structures of the plant, which will continuously support rose blooms month after month throughout the duration of this growing season. Check out the new vigorous growth on all these growing tips. For those of you that haven't pruned your roses yet, hurry up and get out there. I hope this inspires you to know what to do and how to do it. And if so, be sure to give us that thumbs up. Share us with your gardening friends and family. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.